Is your house open? Yeah. Can I get a little table or one of them?
Monday, the day after the Radish Mellas. Um, so, uh, I think we all had a very wonderful time these last two days, and uh, I, I just want to say that I, I saw that most people really had constantly a lot of smiles, especially in the last Kirtans, and everyone was dancing and everyone was happy, and even those who had to leave early because, you know, you get tired at two, two o'clock in the morning, then, they still left with a smile and they were happy and uh, yeah, it was wonderful. I, we saw a lot of uh, waves of ecstasy go around and when I say waves, we even had some real waves going in this corner at some points. Waves of bhakti. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was very nice, it was very entertaining in a way, but it, it showed that everyone, even those who are, let us say, technically on work and on duty, they're having as much fun as all of you over here that were maybe able to be more focused in the Kirtan. So I want to welcome everyone to uh, over here for this Monday. We're going to have for, uh, within the next two hours a, uh, some kind of a small seminar led mainly by Maharaj. I will be joined by a few other devotees that might say one or two things. Uh, the purpose of the seminar is, is to, well, you know, it's nice to have a 24 hour Kirtan. But it's also good to leave with something, let's say, even more productive in the end, some philosophy or some, something for the mind. Because after two hours, I mean, sorry, 24 hours of kirtan, <laughs> one, I think one, everyone purifies himself quite a lot and we're actually more open to hearing and to hearing better what might be said, you know. We, I think if Maharaj said a certain point on Friday and he said it on Monday, we'd be much more open on Monday to understand it and to accept it for ourselves. So that's the reason why we also hold this, is that it's a good way to finish this, um, this, this small, let's say, festival weekend. So uh, last year we had, uh, we, we started last year with uh, this, this system and uh, it was more based last year on uh, getting a lot of the European devotees to connect together and to possibly build up some, build up some plans and how to promote Kirtan and, and different festivals throughout Europe so that everyone can know. This uh, will come up later, back to that, and we'll, we'll show everyone where, where we have gotten so far. But uh, today we're going to be more focused on the Holy Name itself and especially the relationship with the Holy Name, how it's very, very important, and Marjus is going to guide us, of course, into this and uh, give us some, probably some practical clues to, 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 to leave after this weekend. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to space out a little more, so I'm going to give the words to Maharaj now. Thank you, Manu. Thank you. <laughs> and very and nice really, let us thank Manu. He's the the mind behind the radish and those. Krishna does. Uh, he gives the, us the 
microphones, <laughs> the sounds, and even if we lose it, <laughs> he would put it a little higher so that it's still uh, there. And another great, great, great thanks goes to, to our Vince Prabhu and uh, his, his very talented uh, Mayapur TV team. <laughs> I, uh, Vince, would you be so kind to identify uh, our, our young, talented uh, uh, technician? <laughs> what is her name again? Vrindavaneshwari. Vrindavaneshwari, Radhe, Radhe. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Vrindavaneshwari and Santusha, the new star in Mayapur TV. <laughs> you should put the camera into your face. <laughs> and uh, uh, also a lot of thanks to all our internet audience. Uh, it really means a lot that you are here with your mind. I don't know if you know but if someone just thinks of you, he is in some ways present in your life. So all of you internet devotees, I don't, shouldn't say internet devotees, but uh, <laughs> devotees on the internet. <laughs> I hope you are not internet devotees. <laughs> devotees on the internet. Uh, it is... It is it is very, very, we feel you all here in, in spirit. Thank you so much. All right, so I think uh, you want to tell us what happened since last uh, Kirtan Convention, uh, after the last Radhadish Mellows. This was started and we made some decisions and some positive developments that happened. Yes, I appreciate to everyone. Um, I don't know how many of you were here last year or watched over the internet, but um, last year we tried, like Manu Prabhu said, to connect everybody in all our efforts, uh, which we are doing in presenting Kirtan here in Europe. And we had some nice um, stories, life stories, uh, who, which were shared by Mandava, by Amala, Harinam, and by Chakrini and other devotees how they got in touch with Kirtan, what Kirtan means for them, and um, how they wish to engage more and more in Kirtan. And then uh, we all felt together in this room, okay, let's do something together about this. And um, we felt that creating a web page, which will um, connect all our efforts in one space, and then advertise them, would be like the next very practical step towards this. So, um, with the kind help of Nimai from uh, the Pandava Senas in London, then Manu Prabhu, Krishna Kirtan Prabhu, and Bhakti Barbara, who is a graphic designer, we have developed, everything is prepared. Like Maharaj said yesterday, you're going to find out where we are going to advertise things. We are all a little late in our movement, but uh, we just prepared to show you the design for our page and what it's going to be like. Um, as you can see on our homepage, we are going to have just like random pictures from some events. Then here are going to be highlights. Next three bigger events are going to be highlighted. And then next date on the right side, and here just some welcome words. Then we will have the next, um, it's going to be the big calendar, because uh, the main point is that we see month by month, and also country by country, so it will be two calendars. One will be where monthly you're going to see all events which happen around Europe. And then if you are living in Great Britain, for example, and you would like to find out about Kirtans in Great Britain, then you go in that country and then you see only Great Britain. And then we will have a gallery with many pictures from different events. And then the Kirtan team. Here you can see our <laughs> motto. Um, here on the right side we have already some names like Amal Purana or Amala Harinam Purana, <laughs> Chakrini, Janavi, Madhava, Nadia Mani, Sachinandan Swami, and many others who are going to be part of this. And then an event template where um, you can um, kind of alone um, announce your event, and it's going to be updated automatically. 
So um, everybody who's going to be interested in advertising the events, you're going to be able to do this through this um, page. And um, this web page, we are just in the process of programming and putting it into the web space. So we hope that it can be ready in February, end of February, and then we can start from the beginning of March. So, and the name is Kirtan Family. We don't know if you're going to keep that name or I love Kirtan. We're still thinking about this, but if you all kindly leave your email addresses here on this whiteboard, um, then we will inform you what the name is and which address, and then you're going to be able to visit it and update, I mean, put your events on and so on. So this was done from last year, and following to that event, uh, or Kirtan Convention, devotees have expressed a big desire to hear more how we can connect to Krishna or with Krishna through Kirtan. So they have invited Sachinana Maharaj this year to give us this short presentation. And um, yes, you also heard yesterday, we're having many 12-hour Kirtan events throughout the whole year, next year, and they're all going to be advertised here. And let's see what will be the third year and how much we're going to progress. Now I wish to give the word to Sachinanan Swami and the other devotees. Hare Krishna. Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sadasvati Deve Gauravani Prachayine Nivashesha Shunyavani Paskatyade Satharine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nittananda, Shri Arvita Kadadhara, Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. My dear devotees, I have something to share with you which I feel is of profound importance to make the kirtan uh, which we do uh, a kirtan which uh, really touches the Lord's heart and Kirtan, which touches our heart and the audience. I personally feel so enthusiastic about this particular point because it changed my whole attitude to the Holy Name. When I was fortunate to discover this uh, by the mercy of my exalted spiritual master, I'm going to talk today about uh, really that switch which can make the kirtan a uh, connected kirtan uh, and when you don't find the switch there will be a power cut in the kirtan it will be disconnected and there will not be so much light in the kirtan just like this morning I asked Santusha the building looks still so so dead can you find the switch please to put some light in the building and she went and there was a switch somewhere there. She turned the switch and all of a sudden, jup, Prabhupada is in light, the deities are in light, uh, and the whole building is in light. So the kirtan is uh, something like that. In kirtan, you don't need to find the switch. Uh, then when you find it, everything is full of light, full of life, and most important, full of bhakti. Mm. It's all about connecting to Krishna during the time when you do the kirtan. Now I will speak about this, it will be a little philosophical and I know that the baby who is with us will not be able to understand it. 
Uh, so I request the mother to do some more interesting things with your baby. Uh, otherwise, uh, the baby will... There are two babies, yes. <laughs> you are also getting some interesting program outside of the hall. <laughs> yes, please take your babies outside and engage in there. Um, Wait until the babies are out. <laughs> Not out, are well engaged, I should say. <laughs> and please don't just carry them out, do an interesting program with them. <laughs> Good. My dear devotees, there are two bandhas, two connections. We all here in this world have a deep connection with the material energy. Maya is much more present in our thoughts and in our whole planning than we wish it to be. Our minds are bound with chains to the material energy and because the mind of the conditioned soul is so absolutely connected with the material world. It is so difficult to concentrate while you do kirtan. Uh, again and again the mind runs to uh, the material thoughts. Why? Because it is chained there since time immemorial. Mm. Uh, there is this interesting example which I tell during uh, the retreats. It's about mm, a scandal which happened in India mm, uh, when a circus burned down. Fortunately, when the fire <coughs> spread, uh, all the elements, all the animals could escape except for one element animal, the most strongest ele uh, animal, the elephant. Mm, the tigers could uh, run away, the giraffes, the horses, uh, but the elephant uh, could not uh, escape. When the insurance company came and investigated, uh, they found out that these elephants fence who were burned down, they are only bound by a little, a little string like this to a plastic pole. And everyone asked, why, why were they burned? Why could they not flee? And it was investigated that when the small elephant was caught in the jungle, baby elephant and separated from its mother, uh, the captors bound it with an iron chain to a big tree. For one whole week, the little baby elephant tried to escape until the leg was streaming with its own blood. And then after one week, it gave up. From that week, from that time onwards, the little elephant baby could be bound with a little rope like this. Why? Because the chain, the iron chain was in its mind. And when the fire broke out, the iron chain in the mind kept the elephant bound and was the cause of its death. We all have such an iron chain in our mind. It's called conditioned existence, which binds us to the repeated cycle of birth and death. Uh, mm, uh, when mm, uh, you don't cut this chain, your spiritual life is theoretical. Um, I want to tell you a surprise. Do you know that Kalia 
who was defeated by Krishna, was a devotee. That's why Krishna didn't kill Kaliya. <coughs> Kaliya had been initiated by Ananta Shesha into a Krishna mantra and had therefore the eligibility to live for a long time in Braj. He lived there, says the Bhagavata, for thousands of years. Uh, he was a devotee. Otherwise, how would other devotees have married him? Do you know that Kaliya's wives, the Nagapatnis, were great, great devotees? It comes out when they pray to Krishna at the end of the Leela to save their husband, you know, because they saw that Kaliya was slowly becoming humble. First they thought Krishna should just kill our husband. He's a nonsense. Uh, but then they saw that by Krishna's treatment, by Krishna's dancing on the hoods of Kaliya, Kaliya became humble. They said, please save our husband. He, he was good. He was a devotee, you know. Then, at the end, uh, Kaliya prays to Krishna a beautiful shloka from the Bhagavatam where he confesses uh, how difficult it is to break that inner chain that, I will now say a, that, a, a word which you all know, that conditioned nature. He said, Oh my Lord, it is so difficult for people to give up their conditional nature by which they identify with that which is unreal. Maya is unreal. The sansara, uh, the fires of sansara, they are not real uh, in terms of the spiritual uh, eternal reality. But we are so attached, we are so connected to it. And when we sit down for kirtan, sometimes at the beginning we notice we want to run away from the kirtan. <laughs> Our mind has done it many times. So therefore Kaliya says, my dear Lord, I can't change. I was even fighting against you. I was poisoning your devotees with my poison. I was, I'm so bad. You are the only one, Krishna, who can grant freedom from this Maya. My dear devotees, it is for this reason why we do kirtan. We glorify Krishna. And Krishna, seeing our sincere efforts to glorify him, comes in the form, this most merciful form of the holy name in, in our lives and in our minds. The question is, do we let him in? This is the whole question why you do kirtan. Do we let Krishna in? Do we allow Krishna to work his miracles? like very much how Madhva introduced um, his kirtan yesterday. You may notice, he said, we need to now go deep into that place in our heart and, and, and connect with the holy name and then it will come out. This is proper kirtan. If you don't let Krishna in, if you don't connect with Krishna, uh, my dear devotees, the chain will not break or your condition nature will keep on giving troubles to you and all your aspects in, in, in your life. This connecting with Krishna is very, very nicely explained in one uh, verse uh, which I, I would like to find for you. Uh, Okay, 
Krishna Tomar Hanaya di Palaika Bara Maya Banda Hoyte Krishna Tade Kade Bara One is immediately freed from the clutches of Maya, huh? the iron chain. If he seriously and sincerely says, My dear Lord Krishna, although I have forgotten you for so many long years in the material world, today I am surrendering unto you. I am your sincere and serious servant. Please engage me in your service. This is a meditation through which you can connect with Krishna. Pull in Kirtan. And you sing, you chant, please engage me in your service. Now there is one devotee who sleeps and who is not yet connected to the subject. Uh, Madan Mohan Mohini, would you uh, be so kind to very nicely say Hare Krishna? <laughs> Hello! <laughs> yes. When we are asleep, we cannot participate in what's going on. We are not there. In Kirtan, when we remain asleep, and that means be not connected while we sing kirtan. We are just not there. It, it, is, it is we are somewhere else. And my dear devotees, in all yoga paths, the main point, the essence is that while you do this yoga practice, you are absolutely absorbed in the object of this particular meditation. When you do Krishna Kirtan, the idea is, the success of your Kirtan is, are you absorbed? When you are not, then your Kirtan Yoga has not happened. The connection, the union has, is yet to come. So in this little talk, before, before we have invited a very, very powerful devotee to, to talk about the Kirtan revolution in a moment. I want to really teach you three steps, internal steps, which help you uh, to get connected. Uh, uh, mm. But I must first convince every one of you uh, a little bit more on a deeper level on, on this point of Sambandha. There was once a great devotee in Vrindavan who knew that Krishna wanted him to become a teacher and not just do bhajan for himself. So before he started his uh, life of, of, of a teacher, he came one evening to the riverbank of the Jamuna. That's a good place to pray by the bay. And he prayed to Krishna. My dear Krishna, I know you wish that I connect souls with you, but I feel I can't do it. And the other feeling I have is that how can a conditioned soul who is so bound by his conditioned nature ever connect with you? How is it possible that a, that a little frog makes friends with the president? It doesn't, with the king, king. It doesn't, they, they don't speak the same language and they don't eat the same food and they don't sing the same songs. It's so categorically different. How can I connect people to you? And it said that when Yamuna Devi, who is a great devotee of Krishna, hears your sincere prayers, 
that Yamuna Devi will answer your prayers in a wonderful way. Keep this in mind if you ever have an important project that you need to pray for. Go to Yamuna Devi. So Krishna then appeared in his threefold bending form. This devotee could see Krishna with a dhoti which, which, which was like a flesh, the color of molten gold and which contrasted to the glossy, means glossy means shining body of the Lord, which was exquisitely beautiful, especially his face looked as, as beaming as the moon and the, his, the hair was going on his face and the Lord, and the, the devotee looked at the Lord's face and he could see the, the earrings swinging back and forth and putting further light on the cheeks of the Lord. Then the Lord smiles and smiled and the Lord said, you can connect people with me by teaching them one mantra. This is the Sambandha mantra. And he told them a mantra. This mantra appears in our Buddha Shuddhi meditation and I will teach you this mantra in, in, the, uh, in, in our tradition a little while. But he said the devotees should pray, the people you should connect should pray, O oh Lord, I have been separated from you for thousands of births. And this has created within me endless sufferings and complications. And my true blissful spiritual nature has become hidden away. But I know I have a relationship with you. Now I dedicate to you my, my sweet Lord Sri Krishna who are the beloved of the gopis of Vrindavan, I dedicate my body, my senses, my life force, as well as my consciousness, my mind, my heart, my intelligence, and who I think I am. I dedicate to you my home, my wife, my children, all my wealth, as well as anything else I have here and beyond. I offer you my very soul. O oh Krishna, O oh Krishna, O oh Krishna, I am yours. I am yours. And Krishna said, My dear devotee, if you teach people to make a connection like this with me, they will be connected and their conditioned nature will disappear. Does not ordinary water which becomes connected with the Ganga also become the Ganga in quality. Have, who of you have been to the Himalayas? Some. You, you can see so many little rivers. They carry dirt from villages. They come into the Ganga. But once they become connected to Mother Ganga. They become alive. They become very sprinkling, sparkling, fresh. So if you be enter the stream of Kirtan and become in this way connected with Krishna, you, you become a smiling devotee. Like Manu, uh, he has observed. He must have statistically observed this, you know. First you were like this, 
then you were like that because he is a studied man. Highly intelligent, and some percentage, uh, uh, so many more smiles, and the smiles were so much closer to both of the ears, and so on. Yes, if you connect with Krishna, uh, it's like a river who connects with the Ganga. The nature changes, it becomes different. So this, this is so absolutely important. Uh, that, that you can't, I can't just tell you how, uh, how this is important. This year I was in Vrindavan where I met Madhava Prabhu and our B.B. Govinda Maharaj and we uh, did Parikram together and I was very exhausted after the Parikram but I had this, this uh, uh, and I, I call it typhus. Typhus means you, when you show your tongue, it's all black. It really, you feel like a ghost when you have typhus and you're so out of it. But, so, but I had given the promise to Shimati Rararani that at this, during the month of Kati, I would chant extra rounds, no? more, many more rounds you know, than uh, I usually chant. And I was not doing very well until one morning I met my guru in Shanti for that month. I mean, don't worry, I have my, my, my guru is there, you know. But I met a shiksha guru, maybe I should say. It was a black dog. He stood before Lalita Kund and he was howling. I would howl like him. You would run out of the room. It was so loud. I came out of my room. What's wrong? It was just piercing my heart. So I went out, and there was my black, the black dog, and howling over Lalita Kund and over Rana Kund. There were two monkeys with him who were patting him on the head. It's not so bad. Don't worry. You know, monkeys usually run away from dogs, but, but this dog was just so pitiable. Is it an English word? He evoked pity. Do we say pitiable? It was just so pitiable that, that even the monkey. And I went back in the room and I thought, do I have something to help him? And I looked for a chapati, but then I only found, found half of the chapati and I <laughs> threw it, but he even didn't watched the chapati, he was so, he did swallow, he was so miserable. And after some time, then I went to bed because I had typhus and I, I, I was hearing him howling in my dreams. The next morning I went on a Radakun Parikrama and I went into the temple and there I saw him again. It was Artik in the temple and my black dog was sitting at the back of the ark singing the Arctic song, you know, as good as it could. You know, he was really trying. Um, you know, and, 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 and then I asked the priest, you know, who is this dog? And you know what I heard? needed a translator, but the dog had passed stool uh, one week ago in the temple, and then they had to give him temple, uh, they had to throw him out of the temple, how, how do we call it? Temple for board? <laughs> he was banned from the temple, he got a temple ban for one week, uh, you know, and the, 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 the poor dog, you know, he was a devotee. <laughs> he was, how do you feel if you're banned from seeing Radha Gopinath? It's just terrible. It's the most difficult trauma you can deal with. So this, about my dog, you know, little doggy, was, was just howling. And his desperate 
Lee, I want connection. I want sambanda. I want you. I want only you, not a chapati. No, um, nothing. I want you. And this is how he was howling there before my door. How do I know he was howling? Because of the temple. Because, listen to this, my father built bridges, autobahns, tunnels. Yeah. He, we know about directions in our family. Uh, and he was howling in the direction of the temple. It was just a beeline over Lalita Kot, Radha Kot, and then to the temple uh, where Nityananda sat, the Nityananda Maitak is there. He was, uh, he was looking in his in the direction of his deities are the Radha Gopinal, and he was howling. He wanted that connection uh, more than anything, and I learned from him. When I found that out, I went back into my room, and although I had typhus, I was really, I didn't know if the dog can want connection. I know lots about connection. <laughs> Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. I was really chanting and doing everything which I and then I remembered uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Mm -hmm. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said that in Kirtan, in Japa and Kirtan, this is in Harinam Chintamani, 13th chapter, he tells us how we must chant. He says, you must chant with Sambandha. If you chant without Sambandha, you only get the shadow of the name. And my dear devotees, how can you be ever spiritually satisfied with the shadow? You are not even materially satisfied if you eat the shadow of a meal. Imagine I say, I, I have a sweet for you, but I only have one, so I put it in the light and you can eat the shadow <laughs> of the sweet. You would not be satisfied. You would go in the temple or the bakery or anywhere to get a good sweet. Some of us chant shadow mantras since 40 years. Some of us move still in the dark the shadow of their spiritual life because they have not learned to chant with Sambandha. Now how do you do this to chant with Sambandha during Kirtan? Bhaktivinoda Thakur gives three steps and I will briefly talk about it and then Amala Harinam will chant with us. Uh, uh, he is from Vrindavan. He has chanted many days, uh, many years from his childhood there and we will try to apply these steps in Amala Harinam's Kirtan. So you need to listen now very attentively because I, th I must tell you it changed my life when I found this out in Harinam Chintamani and I want to help you change, I think most of you don't need to change that. But, but, you know, I want to give something very valuable, valuable and not theoretical. So he says, first of all, you must connect with the fact that you are an eternal soul. You know, this is what it meant when, when Madhava tells us, now go in that place in your heart. You know, center yourself. Center yourself means 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 come to the place where you are. Go and uh, you know. Uh, how do we say it in German? Don't be a maybe. Be a, be a bee. You know. <laughs> That is, you understand, I'm a part of God. I'm a soul, really. And I'm now engaging in, 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 in the kirtan of Krishna. 
And the second point is, you, you connect with Krishna. Krishna is my eternal master. You do this practically in Kirtan, you can for, when you chant before the deities, you sing for the deities, for the pleasures of the de deity. So when there is no deity, you connect with Krishna in the form of the holy name. Be there with the holy name. Each syllable, be just in the stream, enter the Ganga, uh, and so on. Uh, and then, uh, do this, uh, I'm now separated from him. This is the third step. But I wish to connect with him through his name. Once Aindra Prabhu uh, was asked, how, uh, how do you absorb yourself in Kirtan? It was about absorption, you know, that, that, that point of which we have discussed earlier. Each yoga tradition, also Bhakti Yoga, success is that you can absorb your mind totally into the object of your meditation. And Aindra Prabhu said very nicely, and I think he, he, he got right to the essence of the point in his answer. He said, we are now separated from Krishna, and we don't want it. And we express this separation from Krishna in our kirtan, while we sing to Krishna. Connected kirtan, not unconnected. So first, you come to the place, I'm the soul, I will help you. We will do a meditation, don't worry. Uh, 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 not meditation, a kirtan with this. And then, Krishna is my eternal master. And then, third, I'm now separated, but I want to connect with him. If this is too complicated, you just do, please accept me. That, that mood. It encapsulates everything. Have you, I think this, you remember this, how Prabhupada said the Hare Krishna mantra is a prayer and it means, it means something, Acha. Yes, it means, my dear Radharani, my dear Krishna, please engage me in your service. In other places he says, please accept me, just, just like that. So, so first, really, to express it even in a different way, is you, you, you be attentive to what you do. Be here exactly now in the kirtan. Have you noted? When good kirtaniers start, they, 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 they often have, a, have photos of deities before themselves. Have you noted? And then they go like this. Have you noted this? And then they, they just <laughs> calm down, withdraw their mind from everything because they know they are now responsible. They are leading the other devotees in the effort to connect with Krishna. So they pray often and, and then they start. And often I see good Kirtanir struggling in the beginning. <laughs> so, it's too loud. Oh no, I'm so hungry. Uh, <laughs> I have to sing it. Oh my God, I, I'm, I, I'm struggling with the, the, the same thing uh, uh, again and again. I'm not high enough or I'm too low and uh, I'm so useless and you know it. And, you, and it's a struggle. It's, it's something you need to endeavor. You need to be exactly here. You need to just Pay, connect, first attention. Then you come slowly to the chanting, where your chanting gets some feeling, some prayerful chanting. It's a prayer. Have you heard this? Chanting Hare Krishna. It's our main prayer, <laughs> Hare Krishna. It's, it's a devotional activity. It's not just some, some good music, you know, and some nifty, groovy, with Danga beats? No. It's a, it's, a, it's a prayer. It's a prayer for connection. It's a prayer. Mahaprabhu 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he taught us how to do kirtan in the Shikshastaka. In verse number five, he prays for connection. He, he says, I am just a piece of, of dust, you know. Just can you just please? And this dust belongs to your lotus feet. Can you, can you please just take me? I'm now disconnected. I'm in the ocean of birth and death. And can you just please lift me up and fix me of one, as one of the at atomic dust particles on your lotus feet? Krishna has feet like the lotus. And you belong there. You belong to Krishna. It's just like there the, are these lotus pollen. You know, when you go with a lotus flower, don't do it. They're so beautiful. But if you would do like this, <laughs> the dust would fall over you. So you are like one of the dust particles of, of Krishna's lotus-like uh, feet. Uh, but you are disconnected now. So Mahaprabhu says, please, O son of Nanda, Krishna, I will read it to you in a very nice extended translation. King of the country of love, I appeal for your affection. I'm your servant. I feel deep within myself that I have some connection to you. I'm subordinate to you, but somehow I am now in adverse circumstances. I'm unconcentrated because I look at the microphone stand. <laughs> this is not in the prayer. <laughs> I'm subordinate to you. But somehow I'm now distracted in adverse circumstances. There are so many enemies within me trying to take me away from you. Therefore, I just cannot give my full attention to you and your name. At the same time, I feel from the deepest place in my heart that you are my master. You are all and everything to me. My heart will never be satisfied without your companionship. So I appeal to you. I'm under unfavorable circumstances. I'm suffering. And without your grace, I do not find any relief from my present imprisoned condition. That's how to do kirtan. I would now like to do a kirtan. And uh, afterwards, uh, we will invite a very famous kirtani, a world famous kirtani, if everything works. And uh, we will hear something about this. Um, it's a surprise, I can't tell you. <laughs> so what you just... Be so kind to sit properly. Yeah. Just, just mm -hmm. properly. No need to sit on the floor. You are, if you sit on chairs, it means just try to sit straight. Huh? Sit properly. Yeah. 
I have a stick? <laughs> it, it only takes five, it will not take much time, but it, of course if you have to go, then go, but uh, We had a long kirtan weekend, wonderful weekend, and we are all a little tired. I know, but uh, this is something very practical which you can take with you. I just request you to look a little bit around and just connect to the room in which you are, to the people who are around you, because uh, soon we will focus totally on the Holy Name. We won't do a long thing because I don't think it is practical, but just let us be a little silent for just a little time, just connect deeply, breathe in and out a few times, I mean, all the time, but... <laughs> It's not breathing, no. <laughs> Breathe in and out. And just in your consciousness. Breathe into the heart space. Whenever you inhale. Imagine the air to flow in there, in the heart. It's here where you are, the eternal soul, part and parcel of Krishna. We will now sing together. And during this exercise, in this kirtan, your task is first of all to really hear the Holy Name, to connect with the Holy Name, with Krishna.
your feelings to Krishna that I have forgotten you for so many long years by, by just connecting with him in the prayerful mood like please engage me in your service
We speak all this time on Kirtan Sambanda, that is chanting with an inner sense of connection. We have heard about three steps. First, you come to yourself, I'm an eternal servant, and then you Think of Krishna, whose name you chant. And finally, you try to express the sense of being separated by, by now chanting his names. Please, I say, please again engage me in your service. Okay, this is the Kirtan relation. But for a relationship, there are two people, not, not one. One person can, cannot have a real... I mean, you know what I want to say. He, he, you need two for a relationship. How does Krishna feel? What goes on in Krishna's heart? When you, when you chant like that. Is there a way to know this? Or is it, is it Krishna's secret? Uh, well, we all know, if we ever know anything about Krishna, it's about, if we, we know it from the great devotees. Um, Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur has written about this, what Krishna <coughs> feels. He says, when someone chants the Lord's name, the Lord's mind dwells on that person. I don't know if you all are English speaking people, I'm not. Um, so. I had to look up in the dictionary, what does it mean to dwell? Dwell is, is a, we say dwelling places, that's where, where the house is, the house is a dwelling place, you, you live there, you are there. So when Krishna's mind dwells on something, Krishna is just very close, he's just next to it, he, he lives there, he is there. And he thinks, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur continues, this person belongs to me. This person belongs to me. He's mine. He's my folk. He's my, my person. I will always protect him. And then, Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, because this is a profound statement, he says, when someone chants, Krishna's mind dwells on that person. That means Krishna thinks on him, but to an extent that he's very close to that person. And, and Krishna then says, this person belongs to me. 
I will always protect him. This is a profound statement, and to make such a statement, Sheila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur needs now to bring some authority there. He doesn't just want to say it alone, and he quotes Sridhar Swami. Sridhar Swami comments on uh, Ajamil's chanting, which was not so good. I mean, he was not really thinking of Krishna. But even then, something happened in Krishna's heart. When the Lord heard, <coughs> you know Ajamil? He died and he looked for shelter and he, he saw his little boy Narayan playing there. He was a little small and he did not really understand what was going on. So, so he was just playing there. The other sons were standing around uh, Ajamir's deathbed. But this little boy Narayan, well, you know, little boys don't know what is there. You know, when I was a boy and, and my father wanted to, someone had died, my grandpa had died. My father came to me and said, Grandpa had died, and, 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 uh, and would you like to see him? And I said, of course. Mm -hmm. So I went there, I saw it, Grandpa, and I said, Father, Grandpa is sleeping, no? And I went to him, Grandpa, Grandpa. <coughs> I, I didn't understand what death meant. meant. So Narayan was just playing there, and he, and Ajabir, like Narayan, you know, like any father likes likes the last child very much. And we saw that uh, Kripa Maya family yesterday, and we saw how Molly, Molly is the last child, was was dancing. Uh, Kripa Maya's face boom, blossomed in ecstasy. My boy is appreciating the wild dance. He's on the good path. <laughs> But he also smiled all the time when the little girl, the, not the little, the big girls. <laughs> so, no. so Ajami was very much attached to little Narayan and he wanted Narayan to be included. So he, he called her Narayan, Narayan, just Narayan. So Jida says, and the Lord heard that Ajami was chanting his name. You know, he's also called Narayana Krishna. Hmm? He thought about Ajamir deeply. What to do with this person? And then ordered the Vishnu Dutas, bring him here to me. Then Sridhar Swami says, how much more then will the Lord remember a person who chants his name with a service attitude? If even Ajamir, who had no mind for Narayan. He, he thought of his, his little last born child who he had fathered in a wild encounter with his prostitute wife, you know. Uh, he didn't think of Narayan. He was far away from thinking of Narayan. But if even in his case, took this personally, this Narayan, and he chants my name. And he began to think, what to do with him now? And then he ordered the Vishnu to do that, bring him to me. How much more then will the Lord remember a person who chants his name with a service attitude? My dear devotees, I can promise you, you will get a money guarantee if you want. <laughs> Anyways, a sweet ball. <laughs> no, I want to say, I can guarantee you, if you discover in your own life this Kirtan Sambanda, <coughs> there is no way to tell how, you, how your whole Kirtan experience will, will skyrocket. I think some of you are already doing it. And I can see 
this. When it happens uh, briefly, sometimes tears come in the eyes. I have seen sometimes tears or a, a very broad smile which goes beyond the ears and connects with the back <laughs> in some way. Uh, uh, your whole life will change. And something else. Everyone who will hear such kirtan, he will think, wow! I saw this in this crazy bhakti fest. I'm saying crazy because it was in California, and California, at least for a German mind, is extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, what was going on under the name of yoga and Every yogi was on board uh, to be a little bit more ecstatic in his yoga practice, or, or, or drugs in other words, not every, but many, you know, and, and so on. And, and at the concluding evening, there was Kirtan on the Bhakti Feet Fest, on the main stage, and nine devotees were sitting in the first row and leading the Kirtan. There was Radhanath Maharaj, there was Gauravani, there was Janabi, there was this devotee and that devotee. Radhanath Maharaj came afterwards to me and said, do you see this? In one, uh, one year before, we were thinking, oh, these Hare Krishnas, they are, they are in, their, in their own category. We, we don't, don't feel anything in their care done. It's just, um, you know. And, and, and now we are the leaders of the yoga movement. Because people can see. This is, they cannot see, but they can, they can feel there is a difference in connected care done and disconnected. They can feel that because when there is a connection, feelings develop and, and, and it comes over. The, this connected kirtan will be, it will be a wave of kirtan. It will go, it will go, first of all, our movement will do many more kirtan events and already it's going on, already um, so much our Madhava is traveling like a rocket. Chum, 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 chum. Can you lead Kirtan here? It's already more invitation than you can come, isn't it? More in invitation. And, and others are Kirtaning. And, and now the yoga scene comes and invites, uh, and invites devotees. Big programs are happening. Uh, uh, just because devotees are now serious, uh, we, we, we should do kirtan. And if this connected kirtan, if they come to the stage of connected kirtan, there is, you, 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 we do not know what will happen. I will now invite a famous kirtan singer, uh, an Adi Kirtania, uh, uh, to, to, to speak. But because he's very, very special, uh, he asked us if we can send, uh, if we can do a video on his work. Uh, uh, it's George Harris. At the end, when Prabhupada was on his deathbed uh, in Mayapur, uh, he took a ring from his feet, finger, finger, from his finger. He took a ring, just, you know, he was a, only a, one day, two days before his departure, he took that ring from the finger and he gave it to Mukunda or, or someone who was nearby, I don't know. It eventually reached Mukunda who gave it. Uh, and he said, give this ring to George Harris. It is for him. He has done, he has helped me so much in spreading Krishna consciousness. He has helped me so much. Take this ring and give it to my George. And we will 
hear now a little bit about George Harrison. Uh, maybe maybe for a switch of the, the, the life. Before it, then it would turn out much better than you would expect. And I used to, the same feeling with, I became quite friendly at one point with um, Swami Bhaktivedanta, who formed the Krishna temple. But, uh, you know, they'd call me up and say, come to the temple, um, the Swami's here and he'd love to see you. And I'd be like going through some private nightmare or something and I think, how can I go to the temple? And I'm like this. But then I'd go and I'd always walk out of there thinking, oh, thank you, Lord. I think everything George did, including the songs that he wrote that, that, that didn't have spiritual words directly in them, were spiritual and that that was always on his mind. Even the song Something, that, that is, is considered a, one of the greatest love songs ever written, I think Frank Sinatra said that, can, can be seen as a love song to God. What about the music makes it spiritual, aside from the words? I think what, the thing about the, the music that makes it spiritual is, is the person who is singing it, namely George. That he, he wanted to be spiritual, he had a spiritual dimension to him, he was known to be involved in spirituality. Mantra, as we know it in English, means some, some phrase that's repeated again and again. Actually, mantra is a Sanskrit word originally. It meant a sacred chant to, and, and this maha mantra, maha means great in Sanskrit. It means a great chant for deliverance. 1966, I had gone to San Francisco and I had heard that the devotees had recorded a, a, a record at that time. I had also heard that the Beatles had ordered 300 copies of that. LP, 33 and a third LP vinyl recording. And it was the kind of thing where it just sort of passed that, okay, the Beatles got 300 copies, so after, after about a week we just sort of forgot about it. But I found out later that, that George had gotten that record himself, and that he and John had chanted the Hare Krishna mantra in the, in, while sailing somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea so, for so long that he said that his jaws were aching. I, I think that chanting helped George a lot overcome feelings of distress and anger. He once said to me, George once said that, that once you start chanting, you don't want to stop. I think that he was very attached to the chanting and also to, to uh, people like myself who were of his age and who were on a spiritual path. Sometimes I called him a closet Krishna because he didn't shave his head, he didn't wear robes. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare He wanted to make an album for the Radha Krishna Temple. And all of these people in their white robes, bald heads going around hitting the Indian bells, just trying to at times record all of them with them sort of not necessarily keeping still all the time. Uh, and some of the weird instruments that were, were being brought in to be recorded. It was absolutely fascinating. car radio somewhere in the east part of East London, and the, and the just, just jockey saying, that was a song by a group of bald-headed Americans. <laughs> George said about taking on this project himself, recording the, the devotee singing the Hare Krishna mantra, was that he wanted to get across what he believed through a medium that he was familiar with, and that was chanting, that was a 45 record. And it was quite amazing because myself and none of us thought that this was going to be a, a popular record, and yet it became very popular. It was played in the intermission at the Isle of Wight concert that, uh, it, when Bob Dylan was setting up, and it, it was played at the intermission in a football game in Manchester, where Manchester United was a very popular uh, soccer team. And all the fans, who were probably just there to watch the soccer, started singing along with it because it was only three words and they could all do it. And there were 5,000 football fans singing Hare Krishna. People always say, I'm the Beatle who changed the most, but really that's what I see life is about. The point is, unless you're God conscious, then you have to change because, because it's a waste of time. Everybody is so limited and so 
really useless when you think of, about the limitations on yourself. And the whole thing is to change, try and make everything better and better. And that's what the physical world is about, is change. Sunrise does not... <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> George Harrison Key. Yeah. Hare Krishna. So you can see what is possible through the chanting of the holy name. I myself became a, a devotee. I mean, no devotee will say he is a devotee. I'm, but I went on this path because I remember I had a little group. It was called the Strangers. That's <laughs> <laughs> not called such names. Groups at that time, and we would all sing Hare Krishna before we started because. Hare Krishna was Hare Krishna, you know, it, it was so popular, you can't believe. Because when, and I really think if we become uh, serious about this point, the Kirtan Sambandha, I, I, I think great, great uh, benefit will be there. I will request you now to find yourself a partner, not a life partner, um, a partner for discussion. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I will ask you a question. Uh, you need to just find someone next to you. It doesn't need to be a friend. And I will ask you to, for two minutes to do something before we will uh, uh, invite uh, two other famous Kirtanias to come and speak. But they are with us in person. Uh, okay. Turn around, please find someone. Okay, so uh, who has not yet found a partner, please raise your hand and then you can look around and then you will find one. Everyone. Really? It's very important that you participate. I know some of you are not participating in such things, but it's very important. Okay? Question. Discuss with your partner something about this point of chanting with connection. You could maybe share something which you have experienced um, in the two days Kirtan uh, uh, Radhadish Mellows, Kirtan Mellows. Uh, you could also discuss something about the content of this presentation. You should, uh, you could discuss uh, something which became clear to you. You could also discuss if it's difficult for you to make connection. Something on Kirtan Sambanda. It will help you to, to, to dwell a little bit on this point and go deeper. And more important, hear from your partner what are his inspirations. Please start now. We will only have three to four minutes for this, you, so you need to put on the speed in your mind a little. Mm. Start now. <laughs>
more minutes, so if your partner B has not yet spoken, give him a chance. Sharing. This is very nice. I, I think we all feel like this when we do kirtan and we like to talk about our, our experiences. I want to now invite Janavi uh, to come. Maybe you can sit where the microphone is of Amala Harina and share with us about her experiences in kirtan. I personally think there is great value in hearing from devotees who do kirtan, who have dedicated their lives to kirtan and, and see how they do it, what are their experiences, what maybe are their challenges and how do they uh, deal with them and overcome them. Um, last time at the kirtan convention Last Radha Dish, uh, we had uh, also many devotees, we had more devotees. Today we want to keep it concentrated because my poor TV uh, has to catch a ferry at one stage. <laughs> uh, I hope you're still time. If you have to go, you are, you are allowed to go. Yes. So, yes, Janavi. Please tell us about your experience in Chaki. Um, I feel quite embarrassed to speak in front of everybody. Um, Bada Nandini asked me yesterday to share something, and um, I really feel that, I don't know, I just I wish I could hear from everybody because I don't feel any more qualified to talk about Kirtan. Um, <clears throat> but I'll share a little bit about my own experience. I was just talking with uh, with Nadia, and we were we were trying to remember the time when um, we had started really feeling something about kirtan because we've grown up, we were born and raised in an environment with kirtan all around. But personally, I, as a child, I I know that I always liked it and it was always there, but I don't remember feeling. You know, I I just want to be in kirtan. I just want to spend my time in this way. And we were saying that around the time of somewhere around being a teenager, some sometime there were, it was almost like a switch where something just clicks and you think, oh, actually I now now I remember, I kind of forgot. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And uh, I don't understand that, but um, what I understand maybe from what Maharaj has been saying is that about this connection, um, we all we all are so fortunate. This weekend, I was 
Um, but we have the, the, the luckiest place to sit here looking at everyone's faces because I get to see everyone's expressions and, you know, just so much love and joy. And uh, I was just feeling so lucky to to be with all of all of you. Um, it's uh, who knows how many lifetimes it's taken us to come to this point of being able to be in a sangha of devotees and chanting Krishna's names, and um, <clears throat> so we come to this point, and then we have a, a responsibility to to move forward to the next step. And uh, my own experience, I actually, I, I had this thought, this was sometime around the, <clears throat> the clicking point for me. I, I went to Mayapur, I went to India after a very long time. And I went to Sri Vasangan, which is the, obviously the place where Lord Chaitanya and his associates would have kirtan. And we were doing kirtan there with my dad and some, of, some other devotees. And I just had a sudden thought of, it was a very strange moment. I don't remember having this feeling before, but I suddenly felt an understanding of, I'm, I'm a soul, I'm not Janavi, I'm a soul. And somehow, I'm fortunate enough to be in this place, this holy place, chanting. And what does that mean? What is that responsibility? But now, what do I have to do with this? And then, of course, you know, you feel something for a moment, and it's like this amazing realization, and then, you know, half an hour later, you're thinking about what's for prashad. I'm sure everybody knows that feeling. Um, over this weekend, I felt that many times. It's, it's so hard to keep focused, but um, my experience from being able to uh, in more recent years, travel around the world and, and, and assist in some way in, in sharing kirtan with many people who have who are just hearing it for the first time. Is that um, we're 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 so fortunate. Lord Chaitanya has has given us such a gift, and um, my experience in sharing it with people who have never heard it before has really transformed my understanding of, of uh, what is kirtan and, and why do we do it. Here we're gathered together so many devotees who, um, you know, we are also practiced in doing kirtan and it's so wonderful to be together and get that nourishment as Man has been saying that we recharge our batteries and we you know, become charged up. But the experience of of sharing it with somebody else, um, I think is the thing that most helps me to feel connected because it's no longer, um, it becomes a responsibility. I, I, I must try and connect because I want to help somebody else connect also. And, and even together we can think this way, like, you know when you look around you, um, we were, me and Nadia we were just saying, when you look at everyone's faces and you see how everyone's so, uh, you know, absorbed in the kirtan, it helps you, you become more absorbed yourself. <coughs> so, um, I'm sorry, my, I'm a bit scattered. I feel a bit overwhelmed from the whole weekend. Uh, anyway, so much to say, but, um, yeah, that's my experience. Thank you very much. <laughs> so much singing and uh, 
you know, devotees were very absorbed and very, very, uh, it was a wonderful atmosphere. Thank you very much and we wish you all the best in your service of the Holy Name to Hare Krishna. I would also now like to ask Madhava Prabhu uh, to explain something about uh, the subject of connection. He told me he wants to speak about a certain subject. He will introduce his subject uh, in a moment mm, in, conne in connection to Kirtan Sambanda. Um, but I, I would like to, before he speaks, say that uh, mm, I'm I had heard about Madhava and uh, before meeting him, I heard him, oh, you must hear this new Kirtan singer. He is a, a, a youth and he is really fantastic. And, you know, I don't know, I'm, you know, I'm from Germany, we are a little critical of this. Oh, another is confed, uh, two, uh, one and a half years and no one will talk about it any longer like that either. I must admit I thought because I, I've heard whenever something is, sometimes we have straw fires, things which burn with a lot of light for a minute or so and then disappear. Um, then I met Madhava and I Very, very good frisur. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I was still, but the moment we, we started to talk, uh, I could mm, mm, uh, see haircut is, is a, you know, I could see that he is very, very deep in his spiritual life and, and really a servant of the Holy Name. And I was very much impressed. Then I sat in the kirtan and where I could see there is a magic about Madhava Prabhu which is not melodies or rhythms or mm, skills in using the harmonium but he comes from a much deeper place and when you speak with Madhava he will, he will tell you his history that he was as a young man going to Brindavan and there trained by Indra in the 24, Indra Prabhu in the 24 hour kirtan and uh, he had very deep Krishna conscious I think blessings by, by doing this service for a long amount of uh, years I think six, six years I think that. six years six years it's a major part and uh, I don't want to make Madhava Prabhu feel Uncomfortable because when one is praised before others, one is miser misery, you know. <laughs> and so, but I really encourage you to to hear what he will share about his subject matter, and uh, because we we all are kirtan. I like this very much in Manu's uh, <coughs> opening words. This is not really mainly about kirtan leaders, it's about the holy name. I think you said like that, you know, and we are all singing kirtans. It's, it's, and we just have to learn uh, from uh, how can it work for us in the best way. So, maybe request you to go where the microphone is. So let us hear very attentively. Hare Krishna. <coughs> said I'm also very embarrassed to to talk in front of everyone here especially when there's so many devotees so please give me your blessings that I can say some wise words for the Maya Guru <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I, I just got uh, got up this morning, and I noticed that my voice was uh, pretty much gone. And when I came here, I 
I saw the T-shirts there. And I thought, oh, well, a, a good idea for the T-shirt next year would be not all that money. I lost my voice in Rider Dash. <laughs> T-shirts. I lost my heart in Vrindavan. Uh, I even saw one that says I lost my shoes in Vrindavan. <laughs> As Maharaj was uh, talking about some bandha connection, you know, I was I was just uh, thinking while he was talking. Well, that connection starts with with hearing. Shravana, that's the first the lake of devotional service. Shravana, then Kirtana. And um, I just happen to have this uh, letter from Srila uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, which was sent to me by Sri Dhirupa Mataji. And I wanted to uh, share this with everyone. The name of the Lord and the Lord Himself are not two separate entities, but one. When the sound of the Holy Name passes over the lips, the conditioned sense of hearing and the conditioned consciousness initially process the sound as if it were material. And that is how it is perceived. As a result, only the external ears hears it. Since the other senses and the mind, which is the collective sensory experience, are envious of the ear, which they consider to be an equal partner, the result is that such chanting does not affect the cleansing of the nartas. We do not have the capacity even to, to know that the name and the Lord of the name are one. Yet, as the piercing of the ear is one of the Vedic rites for a young child, uh, five earrings, when our spiritual ear has been pierced by the holy name, the other senses give up their envy of the auditory sense. They no longer quibble with the ear, which alone can perceive transcendental sound. Then the flood of prema pours forth from all spiritual senses and cleans away the contaminants of opposition and malice. Thereafter, the Lord's beautiful form, qualities, associates, and pastimes are revealed in the name Himself, and experienced by the chanter as something quite distinct from his previous experiences in the mundane world. Then the kinds of worries and distractions of the mind that are typical of the conditioned living being cannot remain. This is a this is short, but very uh, deep explanation of of the hearing process. The usual or the normal way to hear things is that we let it go from one ear and let it come back out through the other one. And most of the time we're hearing, we're hearing with the uh, material ear. But we need, at least for myself, you know, I need a different set of ears. You know, which is, you know, situated deeply in the heart to really, you know, open those ears and listen with the heart. 
And at first, the sound vibration goes in through the material ear and then goes to the other set of ears in the heart, which we have to, to be able to open it. <coughs> So that's, that's uh, it can be done very easily, but it's also very difficult. And uh, uh, like they say, the word impossible is only in the false dictionary. But it, it is very possible if we, uh, if we uh, really put our mind and have the desire to do it. And when those ears, those set of ears are open in the heart, then the, the mantra can be perceived in a very unusual but deep and, and life-changing way. It's, uh, it's, it's very hard to describe it in words. Maybe some of you have experiences in, in, in kirtans or maybe during the, this weekend you had experiences that you can't really express with words. So those set of ears are very important. And uh, especially, you know, for that connection, for that sambandha. You know, that link, bhakti yoga, yoga means to link up. And uh, this is, the telephone number is right there. <laughs> right, the number is real. The number is right. It's the right number, it's not the wrong number. Yeah, the Hare Krishna mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. But if the connection is there, then we're not going to reach that person that we're trying to to reach, which is Sri Prabhupada's lotus feet, Krishna's lotus feet. So, that... Uh, that strong desire to, uh, to have that connection is basically what we need. First we desire, then we deserve. Is that all right? First we desire, then we deserve. So, this chanting of this Hare Krishna Ma Mantra is, is the highest gift that we have. It's, uh, there's no words that can describe it. It's, we have to do it. We have to uh, put have our hands together, you know, beat the mridanga, play the cartels, you know. We have pains in the back from sitting down for five, six hours in the kirtans. But there's a price we need to pay. This is the price. And uh, what comes out of it is it gives so much joy and happiness to the heart that uh, you lose track of the uh, material pain. It's what what you're gaining that's really counting, and that, that's 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 the uh, the connection through kirtan. As we notice, as I notice myself, you know, during care time, the mind is always running away somewhere. Food. <laughs> yeah. Pizza. Yeah, thinking of the restaurant. You know, are we going to get some posada off the care time? <laughs> Actually. <laughs> Manu had some uh, pizza saved for for the kirtan years yesterday, but it was locked in the restaurant. 
But uh, all these distractions, they, they come through, uh, especially through kirtan, because, you know, Maya is seeing that, you know, we're trying to, uh, to be serious for a few hours. And she goes, oh yeah, let me, uh, let me try these guys out. Let me test it, let me uh, send some uh, temptations. And all this happens during kirtan. And uh, the secret is to control the mind, to control the senses, you know, sit, you know, in a very straight position, breathe fresh air. It's a little cold, so we don't open the windows, but uh, you know, like a yogi, we, we're trying to link up with, with the holy name. And uh, if we manage to control the mind, we can achieve so much. I mean, that's something that they do also in the, in, in the material sphere. You know, if you, if you want to, uh, to achieve something, you control your mind, you work for it, and you get it. So it's the same thing with Kirtan. If you want the highest result, it needs some work, it needs mind control, it needs sense control, and it needs purity. Sri Prabhupada says purity is the force, and this desire to do it. Like, you know, Ainda Prabhu used to uh, always tell me, don't worry about what people will think when you're singing. Just close your eyes and chant for Radha Krishna, Vishnu Prabhupada. And don't be attached to the results. It's not a, it's not a performance that we're doing. Kirtan is, is something very deep and sacred. I was just telling Namo, Kirtan is fun, but it's also serious business. And uh, it's actually our only business to uh, to uh, to do kirtan because it's it's the highest thing. It's joyful, but it's also you know it connects us to uh, to Krishna on a on a deeper level, which normally in different services we we cannot really do that. But through the holy name, it's much much easier. So, my humble request, I'm just talking to myself, is to awaken, you know, those second set of ears in the heart, to really listen. Listen very carefully and intently to those powerful sound vibration of this Hare Krishna mantra, which will change our lives, which is already changing our lives and which also is, well, is our duty to go out and give this message to uh, the outside people. The charity begins at home. If we have it in the heart, we can give it. Hare Krishna. Wristwatch. I wanted to ask Kribomaya Prabhu to share because did you notice there's a whole Kribomaya Prabhu family is there? <laughs> um, Kribomaya Prabhu, his good wife Guru Charan, I believe, then uh, eldest daughter Janavi, second is Tulsi, and third is a small one, uh, Mali, Hari, Harina Mala or something. No. 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 Nama Mali. Nama Mali. Oh, yeah. Um, they are the examples. This is the Kirtan family. You know, we have the Kirtan family. But it is, it's the thing is, they, they will have to cut. We, are, we went a little bit over time. Uh, Marge, we, we can. We'll, they'll stay longer, Marge. They will stay longer? 
Kirma Mahaprabhu, if we really want to hear from you. Uh, no, just three, two minutes, or three minutes. Or, how do you go? And, and you could see uh, Kripa Maya Prabhu was uh, chanting like a lion, uh, <laughs> dancing like never before in our lives. <laughs> I was, um, I was 16 and I was at a pop festival and it was raining and it was midnight and about 3,000 people were streaming out through a small gate and um, the rain had turned the ground into mud. There was about four inches of mud. and. Uh, we had listened to a lot of music that evening. I had not taken drugs. I was a clean boy. We were coming out of the gate and I heard this dum, 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 and instantly the sound. Something, something. It was almost as if uh, it had stirred a memory. It was like that. It was something deeper than just a percussion <laughs> arrangement. And I saw the origin of the sound. I saw three devotees and they were running in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> Why do Hare Krishnas during Kirtan run in a circle? <laughs> we don't run. <laughs> If any of you find out the philosophical reason why we do this? <laughs> and uh, I noticed that they were splashing in the mud. And they looked as if they were very far away when they were listening to this sound and playing. And the lead singer, he was playing a, a drum very loudly. And his head was tilted at 45 degrees so I could see the inside of his mouth. <laughs> and he was chanting as if what other people saw in him didn't matter. It was just with a complete abandonment. And I stood rooted to the spot. It fascinated me. Who were they? Where were they from? And can I please stay a little bit longer to listen? And I was only 16. So the next time I saw them, I stayed a little bit longer. <laughs> and my whole life has been a struggle to stay a little bit longer. So at Radhadesh Mellows, I think I overcome my struggle not to stay longer, but I managed through the grace of all of you to stay a little, little bit longer. <laughs> and I too have lost my voice <laughs> and, and a little piece of my heart at Radhadesh. <laughs> so thank you very much. Hare Krishna. I just, I just want to say one thing. I just want to say one thing. After singing and trying to sing and trying to become absorbed for a few years, now almost 40 years, I would say that uh, never give up, that would be my message, never give up, just keep on chanting. It's very simple as that, keep on chanting, because the chanting works, it really does work. It's the truth, reality, reality, it is the only reality. Hare Krishna. Hare We have come to the end. Uh, just one thing I want you, two things I want you to take home. Uh, this was a birthday present which uh, was given to me three years ago, a, a little picture uh, about Kirtan. Uh, the only thing was that in this picture my name was there. And you know, 
the surroundings and you know who holds the picture. I think we know by his hand, he has a flute inside in his hand. He received the message, trying to connect with you, and that was my name. I, I believe Krishna, uh, not I believe, I know from the statements which we have read, that Krishna hears every kirtan which you sing. Mm, in the Adi Purana there is a mm, verse which says that Krishna keeps a list of the chanters in, in his heart. So when you chant, trying to connect with Krishna, Krishna receives uh, your letter, Krishna receives your message, Krishna receives your intention and his mind dwells on you, he's there with you, he, he is certainly not disconnecting but <coughs> connecting with you. So I request all of you to take from this year's uh, Radhadesh connection uh, these two messages, try to connect with Krishna and Give a while, Prabhu gave another good one. Never give up. <laughs> Very good sutras. And next, Radhadesh, I will convention. I, I, if I'm invited again, I, I will contribute by giving five steps of how to connect. Uh, that is for the more advanced level. Uh, but uh, also, please keep uh, Madhava's message with you. Mm. Uh, <coughs> He said, uh, quoting Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, connection means first to just hear, you know, and by this hearing, uh, another set of ears will hear, and they, they, they are there, the spiritual ears, they will be pierced, a hole will be made, and the nectar flows right in. And uh, just see Janami's example. Uh, someone who, who came to Sri Basangam and then all of a sudden it made that switch in her in Sri Basangam where she connected with the Kirtan and understood, oh my God, this is very important and I'm, I'm a soul oh, I'm, I'm not these temporary roles which I play I'm an eternal part of Krishna uh, I, I hope that I mean, many of you have found the switch, I believe. Otherwise, you would not be here in the Radha Dish Mellows. You, you came to sing more. Uh, but mm, still, on another higher level, we can all improve on this, you know, connecting with our spiritual heart to Krishna. Uh, that is something. Please watch the web page. Uh, and, and use the web page. It's a servant, a you know, service which uh, you know, the devotees want to do for you. So please, uh, if you want to publicize your kirtan so that others will know and uh, and so on will come, you just please write to those who are the web masters. Uh, this is all in February, end of February, maybe a maybe end of March, because we, I know we are in February, we have the Kirtan Mela in Mayapur, uh, but uh, then you will serve us, uh, or help us serving uh, your Kirtan. Uh, good. Now, we have the very, very, very uh, difficult task to say, this is the end. I will uh, ask one devotee, maybe it's Yamasaki. Uh, we brought some sweets for you, not the shadow of the sweets. <laughs> <laughs> and she will stand at the exit and uh, distribute to you a special kirtan almond, <laughs> which is probably uh, Maha Fashad. So it's for you. I thank you all very much for your kind participation. This happens to now be your prasadam time also. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. No, I'm just thinking. Good. Uh, I thought something is in the bag of Madhava, which she will. Madhava's treasures are in his heart. And
at the, at the scene. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, the closing words I will give to our Maruji. Maybe there's something you have to say. Mahar just told me I should ask you all to come next year. So, <laughs> yes, and uh, Mahar, of course, you're invited again next year. And I don't think we could do the festival without you. So yep. please uh, confirm with me as soon as you can. <laughs> uh, yeah, prasadam should be served. I think normally very confined and served in the tents. And uh, just a quick request for all the devotees that still need transport is to make sure you have uh, arranged it, whether it is for today, for tomorrow, or for Wednesday, and not to just leave it to last minute because it's not easy to uh, organize for this this amount of devotees, especially now with the snow. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy your last day, your last hours over here. And uh, in the evening, we, we do have still some kirtan from, uh, I think, from 7.30 to 9.15, which is our normal hours in the temple. So uh, yeah, everyone is welcome if you're still here to participate. So uh, I vote to everyone and uh, I hope to see you all next year here even more blissful and uh, more seeking to gain even some more and uh, to hear what Maharaj will have to say the day after and these five steps to take. So thank you very much to everyone. Hare Krishna. Prasadam will be served in the in the temple, in the entrance of the temple. Santosh stays here. So thanks again for joining us. And I hope you'll join us for the Mayapur Festival, uh, particularly the Kirtan Mela in Mayapur, followed by the Parikram. It'll be great, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, thanks again. This pro?